When you create an endpoint, or in this specific case, a server function, you usually have some logic in common. It could be authentication, monitoring, or error handling. To keep this maintainable and safe, Tanstack Start has the concept of middlewares. My name is Leonardo, subscribe to the channel, and let me show you some code. Long story short, this is how you create a middleware. There's the create middleware function coming from Tanstack React Start or Solid Start. And from here, you can define some logic that runs only on the server. In this case, the first thing I'm doing in the handler is getting the SuperBase client so that I can call the get user. And here I can pass the user that I retrieved. In this case, you see that I'm not just returning data.user, but what am I doing? I'm calling the next function coming from here and also passing everything inside this context object. As a result, if a server function uses this middleware, it's going to find inside the context, the user, and why not also the SuperBase client. And the syntax is super simple. Let me show you. For example, here, there's this get community server function. Here, I'm calling middleware that takes an array of middlewares. That's already a hint that you can pass more than one. And as a result, the context has the user, that is user or null, and my SuperBus client. This is the most basic usage, but let's see what else you can do. Sometimes we have some logic that doesn't have to be executed on the server, but on the client. And you can do the same with Mindoverse, but instead of using .server, you can use .client. This code will be executed on the client. And as you can see, I'm also calling the same next function coming from the parameters here, but this time I'm using send context instead of context. And the reason is that context is the actual context living only inside the server. And for sure, you cannot access in the client the server context. So if you want from the client to push something on the server, then you have to use send context. This data will be serialized and be available for the server. And I can show you here, if I open also the server handler of the same middleware, we're going to find that in the context, I've got the exact same content coming from send context. So first of all, this execute on the client before firing the request. And this is what happens on the server, having the same context coming from the client and continuing with the next function. But before showing you the user middleware and the log middleware on the browser, Let's also concatenate them together by creating a third middleware that uses both the log and the user middleware and make sure that the user is actually authenticated. The magic here is that if I hover the context, you're going to find that since this is using the log middleware, it indeed has the data coming from the client. It has the answer that is coming from the server of the log middleware and also has user and the SuperBase client coming from the user middleware. And please, let's take a second to appreciate how everything is pulled in third. I didn't even have to write a single type and everything here has all the type that I need. And with that said, here I can make sure that if the user is not defined or it is actually null, I can throw and return a 401. And only if the user is actually there, I can call next and again user passing my context.user. Let me also show you that in my first user middleware, I don't even check if the user is there. So user is user or null. But in this case, since I'm obviously having an if statement here, user is now always defined. And if we go to the server function using this very specific middleware, here user is always defined. But enough talking really, let me open the terminal and show you on the browser. Now the situation here is empty and same is in the browser console. Now let me call you this join function. And here you can see that first of all, I printed client middleware coming from the client handler of the log middleware. And if I go on the console, let's see what happens. First of all, I call the join community server function as expected. Next, the first line is I'm just logging something I received from the client. So here, as I show you, I call the join community server function. And the first thing I defined is to use the user required middleware that inside it is using log and user middleware. So here, the first printed line comes from log middleware, which is the first. And this is the value received from the client. So here the client sent hello world, actually the string word. And in the server, I had the exact same value word coming from this context. Next up, I've got the answer is 42, which was forwarded by the log middleware and is actually printed by the user required. So as expected, 
this log middleware run first, then the user middleware, and then we have this server handler running as third. And since I was logged in, everything just ran fine. But let me show you how I can enter this if statement. Let me leave this community. And here, if I log out, let's say that for whatever reason, the join button is still here, but it shouldn't as only sending user can join a community. In this case, if I click join, then I'm gonna get the 401. And the reason is that when the join community function, even before running the handler run the middleware, I got into this if statement and I just threw a JSON response setting the status to 401. And this is the message you can also find right into the network tab. But in some cases, you might want the middleware to run for all server functions. And for sure, you don't want to go into each single one of them specifying middleware here. And the answer is global middleware. In this global middleware file, you can call register global middleware and the syntax is exactly the same. You can specify an array of middlewares. This is just printing a console log and calling next. And as you can see, since you already saved this file, how server reload kicked in, each time there's a server request, you will find global middleware being printed here. And that was it about middlewares. If you're also interested about data loading techniques, like how to use Tanstack query inside Tanstack start, there's a video on my channel that might be what you're looking for. As usual, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!